In today's exciting episode, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm gonna answer a question that I get asked all the time, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. So as many of you know, Custom Garden Solutions does all things related to helping people grow herbs and vegetables so they can live a healthier and happier life. We install herb and vegetable gardens. We provide services and do maintenance relating to those herbs and vegetable gardens. We consult. We provide irrigation and rain barrels and basically everything related to helping you grow herbs and vegetables. One of the things that we do is that we deliver organic compost specifically made to grow herbs and vegetables. We get a lot of phone calls and one of the, uh, not one of the, but the most asked question <laughs> is what's in your compost? Basically it's four things. Food scraps, green waste from trees and leaves that are ground up, rock minerals or rock dust that comes from a mining facility in Flagstaff, which is about an hour and a half, two hours away from Phoenix, and horse manure from a local horse stable where we know what's going into it. So those are the four main ingredients. The next question is, how is it made? So we have a choice between aerobic, which means with oxygen, or anaerobic, which means without oxygen. We found that the aerobic method works the best. So how is this done? So once the four parts of the compost are mixed together, they're placed into long, high rows, and they're turned or aerated and watered when needed so that the bacteria and the fungi have a chance to start thriving in your compost. So that's how we do it. We found that's the best way to have healthy, nutritionally dense herbs and vegetables. Anaerobic is often used by people who provide compost, not so much specifically made for growing herbs and vegetables. And basically what I've seen here in Phoenix is they're making big, huge piles of basically mulch and just letting it decompose over time with no manure or rock dust or food scraps and it isn't turned or aerated, right? So it's, it's anaerobic without oxygen. So that's a little bit about anaerobic and aerobic and why we feel growing aerobic is much better for growing herbs and vegetables. Another question we get a lot of is, can you grow in 100% compost? And the answer is absolutely yes. It's what we do, it's what we do for our customers. We totally recommend it. We recommend that the top 12 to 18 inches of your garden bed be 100% compost, especially if you're growing root crops like carrots and beets or turnips or potatoes or things like that. You wanna go a little bit deeper. Another question we get all the time from customers that we're delivering compost to or that we're installing a urban vegetable garden for is can we grow in the compost right away? The answer is absolutely yes. It's what we do and it's what we recommend. One thing that I would say is compost is very loamy, very loose, very fluffy, for lack of a technical term. I guess loamy would be a technical term. But, um, and you, we recommend, it's what we do, that you just spray it, put your, put your hose on a, on a fine spray and just kind of spray it nice and evenly because you want the compost to settle a little bit. It's going to settle about 25%. You'll notice that the compost is very... Very loose, right? And by watering it a little bit evenly, it will settle down a little bit and it'll just make it a little easier to plant and to seed. Another question we get all the time from customers is asking us how much compost do we think that they need? The best way to figure this out 
as long as you know the dimensions of your grow space, is to go to Custom Garden Solutions and use the compost calculator. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. We actually did an episode four or five months ago on how to use the compost calculator and some extra tips and trip, tips and tricks, easy for me to say, to use when you're getting your compost. One thing in particular, after you've got the amount that the compost calculator calculates for you, is you might want to add about 25%. Do you remember when I said that the compost is very loose and loamy or fluffy a little earlier in this episode? Well, it is. So if, if it's going to settle 25%, you may want to amend or add more compost to your garden several months after you've had it initially installed. So what I would recommend is get that extra 25% up front and you, here in Phoenix, you might want to put a tarp over it and you might want to water it lightly, your extra compost, so as to keep the fungi and the beneficial bacteria thriving. Now, if you want to get a little bit more, if you've got the room to do it and the budget to do it, I highly recommend that too. So not only do you want to raise the level of the garden to, to, to keep it optimal, but you also can use fresh compost, almost like a fertilizer. So a lot of times what I'll do is, let's say I know it's gonna rain. I'll take from a spare compost pile, a couple of trowels of compost, and I'll place it around all my plants. And then when it rains, that fresh compost with you know supercharged uh, fungi and beneficial bacteria will seep into the ground and give the plants a boost organically. So you might, you might want to get you know, an extra 25% just because it's going to settle and maybe a little bit extra so that you can amend to your garden for months or years afterwards. So I'm kind of a compost nerd. And if there's one tip that we provide to our customers of all the tips, consultation and advice that we provide, the one tip is to start with good soil. And good soil is usually compost right so let's talk about two scenarios scenario one is you don't have good soil you don't have good compost right and you do everything right other than that you put the correct plants in at the correct time of year and you space the plants perfectly and you water correctly and you identify bug issues and disease pressures and you just do everything right with loving care. But if you don't have good soil, it probably isn't going to work out. Now, the good news, on the other hand, let's say you have compost delivered by Custom Garden Solutions <laughs> or you use good compost. You can make a lot of mistakes and your garden's gonna be a lot more forgiving. So maybe you don't water properly, and maybe you don't put the plants in at the right time for the right season, and maybe you don't do your spacing right, and you don't know much about bug pressure, and you don't know much about disease situations. There's a good chance if you started out with good compost that everything's gonna be okay, and that you're gonna have results, positive results from your garden. So my one tip, the most important tip before you do anything else is good soil. Let's say we're brought out to a consultation and the customer is having problems growing things. Unless we remediate the soil or bring in good soil if they have bad soil, there's nothing we can do. I mean, that's kind of the foundation of gardening, kind of the, the blocking and tackling of growing herbs and vegetables kind of the ABCs of <laughs> being a successful urban vegetable gardener. So just get good compost, that's my advice. I'm Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. Our channel's all about helping you grow herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff so that you can live a healthier and happier life. If you want to learn all about growing herbs and vegetables and all kinds of cool garden stuff, then start today by subscribing. And so you don't miss anything, hit the notification bell because you never know where I'm going to show up next.
Today I'm next to a big compost pile. Helpful trip, but we also included some helpful tick. <laughs> but we also included some helpful tips and tricks. <laughs> the weather might not cooperate, cooperate, totally cooperate, cooperate, cooperate. <laughs> tips and trip, tips and tricks, easy for me to say.